Hello. Hello. Do you like Katie or Catherine? Katie. My real name is Catherine, but no one calls me that. Everyone calls you Katie? <laughs> yep. Okay, so um, just to get this started, I talk. I'm going to talk about it in the intro. But you're 18 years old. Yep, I'm 18. I'm about to turn 19, but I'm still 18 for the time being. <laughs> and you pretty much run Joe Perry's fan page on Instagram. Yeah, so I started running a fan page for Aerosmith when I was 12. Technically, I started running it when I was in sixth grade because I had an account that was completely separate from all the Aerosmith stuff. It was specifically for my bracelet making, which I was known for when I was like very small. But I posted a picture of Joe Perry shirtless. My mom saw it and she's like, you need to delete all these pictures of Aerosmith. So I stopped running the, the short-lived fan page like a month into it. This was like 2015. And then in March of 2017, I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to make a fan page. Oh, wait, can I, can I swear on this? Is that, is yes. that fine? Okay, yeah, cool. but you know what? You're like a runaway train. So let's go back for one second. <laughs> I know, I am. I need, I need to ask you first, how, in the, how old were you when you... We'll start with Aerosmith because it's obviously your favorite band. How old were you when you discovered Aerosmith and how did that happen? Were, you, were your parents music fans? I mean, how did that this all come together for you? Okay, well, to get the first question out of the way, I got into them when I was, I technically got into them when I was three, but didn't really get into them <laughs> until I was nine. So I'll I'll start with the first part. So when I was a toddler, I had a speech condition that mimics that mimics itself as autism. So I was not speaking like proper sentences until I was like three or four years old. So I went to a bunch of pediatricians. They, I mean, my mom works with special needs children and she was very concerned that I was like on the path to being autistic. And so my pediatrician was like, no, like she definitely has the intelligence within her to not be autistic like I just I am noticing signs that she isn't autistic and one of those signs being that I really liked music there are home videos of me when I was like two years old humming in perfect key to certain songs and it's like what two-year-old is humming in perfect key to like upside down by Jack Johnson like that's just that's not like it's not heard of so um one of the first songs that helped me learn how to sing because singing is in a different part of your brain than speaking so my parents figured, well, if we try to get her to sing because she can hum, maybe she can like sing the words back. One of the first songs I ever heard was Sweet Emotion. And so I was singing the mm. words of Sweet Emotion back to my parents. They were like coaxing me to sing the words. Another song that they showed me was um, Forever in Blue Jeans by Neil Diamond. So it's like I grew up on like mainly Yacht Rock. So like Steely Dan, Doobie Brothers, Eagles, like that sort of thing. But then I took that um, sort of music that was a little bit more easy listening and you know took that into my own hands and got myself an ipod when i was nine years old and you know some of the some of that stuff was downloaded on my ipod already but then some of my brother's stuff was also on it because i have an older brother who's like 26. okay so, so did he, he have something to do with getting into you into music indirectly so he had a bunch of pre-downloaded songs from his iCloud, which got downloaded onto my iPod. Okay. And there was like, um, pian the only two songs I really remember are Piano Man by Billy Joel and Pink by Aerosmith. And so I listened to Pink and I was like, oh my God, like this is such a good song. Like in my nine-year-old brain, like this is the best song I'd ever heard in my life. And so I continued to like listen to the rest of their catalog. And from there I was like, okay, I'm literally obsessed with this band. I need to make a fan page for them. I need to connect with other people from around the world who like Aerosmith, because obviously being, you know, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old, not many people were really into Aerosmith who were my age. I was actually bullied for it for a long time. And so I was like, well, how about I make a fan page? And I did, I started it on March 21st, 2017. And I've been running it consistently ever since. It was, like I said, it was wow. first an Aerosmith fan page. And then like about a year into it, it started just naturally turning itself into a Joe Perry fan page. 
And then I was like, okay, how about I just change the username? Cause it was originally arrow fans, which is very simple. And I'm like, that's, that's, that's too simple for me. Like I, I don't feel like I'm as basic as arrow fans. And so I was like, okay, let's do something like kind of obscure. Um, let's do like an Aerosmith song. That's kind of obscure. Like, I don't know, bright white fright, like a, a Joe Perry song, not like a one that Steven sings lead on. So I was like, oh, I could do like bright light fright. I could do, um, I don't know, back, back train. But then I, I stuck with Oasis in the night just because it had a, it had a nice ring to it. And a lot of people thought I was an Oasis fan page for a long time. People still <laughs> tag me in like Oasis, um, pictures all the time. And I'm like, this isn't and that. And so I had to change like the, the name of my right. profile instead of like saying, Oh, I'm Katie. I had to write Joe Perry fan page or else I'd get tagged in like all this Oasis content. And I'm like, I'm not an Oasis fan page. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's been really good. I mean, it, I've gotten connected with so many fans. I met my girlfriend through my page. And so like, it's, it's been so great just being hey, able hey, to, were you getting supported from, I'm sorry, I mean to interrupt, but are you, were you getting That's a okay. lot of support from your parents when you started to do this? Did they even know you were doing it? No, I didn't tell them about it. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I think they're like pretty unfamiliar with the fact that I'm running a fan page. They know about it, but uh, truth be told, like my mom isn't on Instagram. My dad's on Instagram, but I, you know, to you me like them. that, <laughs> yeah, I blocked, like truthfully, I did block my dad from my account. Um, <laughs> but it's not Sorry, because dad. I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's okay. You, he's, you know, he's, he's into his Eagles, his Steely Dan, his Doobie Brothers. I'm into my Aerosmith, Nazareth, Super Tramp, that sort of thing. So, um, the reason I blocked him wasn't because I was like, oh, I don't want dad to see this. Like he, he doesn't need to know like my obsession for Joe Perry. It was more so because, and I've done this with, with like even friends of mine. It's like, I use that space to talk about Aerosmith, Joe Perry. And if you're not into it, like I don't really see a reason for you to see that that part of me unless I want to, want you to see it. And I want you to see that side of myself. And so like, I mean, I've, I have a few close friends that follow my fan page, but nothing, no one other than that. Like, I really just try to keep it under wraps just so I know that my following is not based on like, oh, you know, all of my friends follow my fan page. It's like actual people from around right, the world who actually right. like Joe Perry and Aerosmith. So, so why Joe Perry? How did it end up going from Aerosmith to Joe? So I actually met Joe um, about five years ago. It'll be five years and like a couple of weeks, actually. When you were only 13. I was 13 years old. And it was like six days after Sweet Slim Manifesto came out. And at that time, I was reading Joe's book. And I just, I saw a lot of similarities between myself and him. The only, the, really the only main difference was the fact that I'm like a total extrovert. He's pretty like reserved, quiet, but like everything else pretty much aligned. Like, you know, he didn't come from a musical family. I don't either. No one in my family can play any instruments. I play six instruments. So you do. I sing, yes, I sing. I play acoustic and electric guitar, piano, drums, and ukulele. Do you have a band? And I want to learn the mandolin. Yes, I do actually. Um, but it's um it's a work in progress. So <laughs> yeah. Um wow. But yeah. So, so so you so how did you get a hold of a, a Joe Joe Perry's book when you were 13 years old? How did you pull that off? <laughs> um I had a Kindle um that I had to use when I was in elementary school for my eyesight because I also have eye issues among any, any, a bunch of other issues. So <laughs> I had to bring that into school all the time. And I was like, you know, I can also download books on this. So I downloaded Joe's audiobook. Um, I think I was in like, I don't know, sixth or seventh grade. And, you know, I don't have the attention span to sit down and listen to someone talk for like an hour. Right. So I just broke it up into like chunks. I don't know how but I, after I met Joe, I was able to read the entire book in three days. In wow. three days, I was able to read Joe's book after I met him. And I think that's just that just goes to show how impactful it was to meet Joe. It was only now, for like two minutes, but it's like 13-year-old me was like astonished. <laughs> where, where was it that you met him? Uh, Newberry Comics in Boston. So it was an in-store for, for Aerosmith or was it just Joe? 
No, it was for um, Sweet Slim Manifesto. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, um, which yeah. Which came out in, yeah, January 19th, 2018, because I remember staying up for it right. and just freaking out. Um, so I actually, yeah, I went with my dad. Um, I went after school and I, I cringe when I see the, the outfit that I wore because I was just, I was not myself at that point in time. I was very much being peer pressured and manipulated into being a person I wasn't. It wasn't until like sophomore year of high school where I was like, fuck it. I'm going to wear whatever the hell I want. And I don't care what anyone thinks. By the way, by the way, for the people that get to see the Zoom portion of this on YouTube, because I am going to put it on YouTube, that is a cool shirt. I've never seen that Joe Perry Project shirt. And for the people that are listening, it is it's a totally cool shirt. I have seen the Joe Perry Project many times, but that shirt, no. Well, there is actually a good story with this shirt, but I'll go I'll I'll tell that later after I finish okay. talking about Joe. Because I know I know if I start talking about this, then I'll just completely abandon the Joe me, meeting Joe Perry thing. So because <laughs> knowing me, I jump from idea idea to idea. I, I know the feeling. Easy. I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so I was my dad and I were like the one of the first five people in line. Um the other three were, oh my God, there was a like a very tall man. Cannot remember his name. Uh, there is a woman named Cheryl and then a girl named Ashley, who I, I'm still friends with Cheryl and Ashley to this day. Um, and so we started talking like, you know, Aerosmith, Joe Perry, that sort of thing. And the line started accumulating. We probably got there around four o'clock and the meet and greet started at six. And so like the line went out the door. Like it was, there were a lot of people there. Which Newberry um, Comics was this? Uh, it was the one on Newberry Street. It was the old the location. It was like yeah. it was like the one with the the staircase, and it right. was like sort of a rectangular, um, like setup. Uh, one side was for records. One side was for like anime and posters and comics and stuff like that. Um, and so I just I actually remember the the like songs that they were playing while we were waiting for Joe to arrive. So they played Shake in My Cage and then they played uh, the entirety of Switzer Manifesto from Rumble in the Jungle all the way to the end, um, which is Won't Let Me Go. Um, and so actually Sick and Tired was playing when I met Joe, which is, I think my favorite song off the record. It's been a little bit since I last listened to it, to be honest. Um, but I remember just, I remember turning the corner and seeing Joe in the middle of the room, and I had three thoughts in my mind. Mm -hmm. First, I was I was having heart palpitations because I was so nervous. I was like my entire body was shaking, like my body literally could have caused an earthquake. Um, and so I my voice was shaking, I was shaking, like the whole room was spinning. I was hot, like <laughs> it, was, it was it was not good. Um, and so. I was like, oh, I'm going to have, like, I was whispering under my breath. I'm like, I'm going to have a heart attack. Like, I literally, I feel like I'm dying. Um, and Joe was a lot shorter than I thought he was because this was the first time I'd ever seen him in person. I'd never seen him in concert before that. Mm -hmm. The only Aerosmith related concert I've been to um, up until that point was I saw Steven Tyler on the Today Show in 2016. Um, and so um, I was like, oh my God, he's like so short, like, I mean, I wasn't that tall. I was like five three. I'm like, I'm I'm not much taller now, but like I was five three. He wasn't that much taller than me. And I'm like, he looks like a wax figure. Like this this doesn't feel real. Like I feel like I'm just like in a wax museum looking at like a figure of Joe Perry. Like this doesn't this doesn't feel real or look real. I I can't believe this. Um, and so I was just like I was trying to calm myself down and like the people around me were like, Are you okay? Like you don't seem well. <laughs> um and so like all, all of the people that I've been talking to before like go up and talk to him and stuff and I'm just like I'm like this I'm like oh my god I, I can't look at him I can't do this um and so I'm literally staring at the ground when it's my turn and Johnny B's like oh you're you're next you're next I'm like no no I'm not did next. you say no, John not. did you say John B John yeah B John B and Ellie yeah and he was there yeah, so John like, was oh, on the show. John was actually on the show. I know I've known John for years. He's a great guy. Yeah, I actually heard um, the interview with him. It was very interesting. I actually reached out to him about that um, interview not too long ago. 
um but he was like oh you're next and i'm like i'm gonna have a heart attack and then like joe hears that like all the employees hear that like aaron perry heard that and uh ernie botch was there and they were all laughing and i'm like oh my god i know i know i was i was so embarrassed i'm like i i just i couldn't even look at him and he's like oh you're fine you're fine and you know, they take my phone, take the picture, and I, I tried my damn hardest not to stand near him. And Joe, Joe just like pulls me into him, and I'm like, no, I, I can't even look at you right now. I, I, I can't look at you. Like this is too intimidating. Um, and so he's like, oh, like what's your name? And I'm like, oh, my name's Katie. Um, and I had a, I had gotten another um copy of the record for my friend at the time because it was her birthday like a couple of days later so I got her a signed copy and told him what her name was and in my mind I'm like okay I had rehearsed what I wanted to say before but now it's all slipping my mind I have no idea how I'm gonna elaborate on my on my thoughts right now I, I can't say anything like and the only thing I <laughs> the only thing that could come out of my mouth during that time this is actually on video and it has like it probably has like 5,000 views at this point like on all my social media um which is a little embarrassing but I'm just saying I just said I love you and he turned <laughs> around and he's like oh that's so sweet and he gave me a hug and I I completely blacked out I I don't remember any of that <laughs> like you are it, a fan. I felt, <laughs> it felt like I was it felt like I was tripping on acid before I even knew what that was like the whole room was like changing colors mm. it was bending like Oh, my, I was having hallucinations. It was awful. Okay, um, let me stop you for a second because you're like, you're, <laughs> are you are you in college now? Yeah, I'm a freshman in college. Are you, are you in your college dorm room? No, I'm actually back home in Connecticut, but I'm going because back to school next week. Because I see the shrine behind you of all the photos and stuff. <laughs> I was just yes. curious if you brought that with you to college or. I actually did, sort of. Um, I was pretty lazy with my decor and I was just like, how about I take like some of my favorite records from my record collection and put it on my wall. So I have like news of the world by queen. I have, mm. um, face the music by ELO. I have once, uh, what were once vices are now habits by the Doobie brothers. I have crisis. What crisis by super Tramp. Okay. Hold on a second. Hold on a yeah. second. You're 18 <laughs> years old and you're into all this classic rock. Yeah. How, how did this happen? So, Aerosmith was my first favorite band and then I only listened to them for a long stretch of time and then when I was in seventh grade I was like okay I need to get into something that isn't Aerosmith I'm like kind of getting sick of this and so the next band that I got into was Queen and so the first album I ever listened to by Queen was News of the World and I that it's a great album it is not my favorite Queen album I'm kind of embarrassed what my favorite Queen album is. Uh, it's the miracle, but I know no one's going to agree with me on that. That's okay. Um, um, Invisible <laughs> Man, though, is on the miracle. That and that's that's one of Brian May's best leads that he ever played. So you, have, oh, your yeah. taste is not as... We're going to talk about Queen later because we have a little surprise. So I'm mm -hmm. a huge Queen fan. So besides Queen, who else? Um, Fleetwood Mac, um, Greta Van Fleet. Okay, they're uh, a Zeppelin. they're a modern band, so they're a, yeah. at least you got one band. <laughs> yeah, one band. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Bright and the Shakedown, another modern band. Um, obviously, the Joe Perry Project, Went for St. Holmes, Hollywood Vampires, um, Super Tramp, as I mentioned, ELO, uh, Pavlov's Dog, Crack the Sky, uh, Firefall. Um, so, like, I I like all the the obscure stuff do, or do the you, obscure stuff by today's standards. Do you have all this stuff on vinyl? Not all of it. Um, I do have like a few. I I'm a very casual uh, vinyl collector. Um, some so of the records I do have. You do streaming, or do you have CDs, or what do you? I have I have everything. I have a little bit of everything. I have cassettes. I have CDs. I have vinyl. Cassettes. Um, yeah, but I mainly just stream because it's more convenient. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, I still like put a record on the turntable and listen to it especially like to lose street by the doobie brothers that's one of my favorite albums of all time the captain me wow. by the doobie brothers wow um yeah i've seen them three times a concert they're fantastic um i also 
I also have, again, Crisis What Crisis by Supertramp, my favorite album of all time. I will not go off on that tangent, though, because that, that will take a long time. You, you um, mentioned Greta Van Fleet. Are there, are there any other new bands that come out these days that you like? or you? Oh, yeah. Um, like I mentioned, Tyler Bryant and the Shakedown. I like the Velveteers. I like the Nude Party, Habibi. Um, of course, those are the only ones I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure there's plenty more that I'm not thinking of right now, though. You seem you seem like you're you could be a music journalist. You seem like you should be writing for a magazine. As a writer myself, I can I see it. You you really you have a great knowledge for your age of all of this. I feel like this is the film Almost Famous Part Two going on right here. I'm sure you like that film. Um, you know, I have to tell you that I, I'm a big Aerosmith fan too. I saw Aerosmith probably 20 times. I met the band one time. Well, I met Brad more than a couple, a couple of times. Cause he, um, produced a band that I worked with the neighborhoods, but you're going to love this story. When I was living in LA and I was working, um, uh, for third stone music, um, my friend David Robertson was was uh, uh, Stephen Tyler's right hand man for a while, so he invited me down to Warner Brothers Studios when they made the Love in an Elevator video, and I remember going there that day and I hung out all day long and I met the whole band. It was the only time I really met Joe. Actually, was that day at, when they were do, shooting that video, and um, I ended up seeing like them many times after that too. I saw the old version of Aerosmith and then the newer version, same guys, but you know how they took that little break there, you know, and then they, they came back. Um, I just had to tell you that because the first time I saw Aerosmith, I was probably younger than you. So that's how long Aerosmith has been around. Cause I'm a lot older than you are. I can tell you that. <laughs> Um, the next thing I want to ask you is the Joe Perry project. You know, they had three different singers on three different records. I mean, do you have a preference? I like Ralph Mormon the best. Um, oh, I so I've been a singer, as I mentioned, since I was two years old. So I've been singing for 18 years. I'm actually in or 16 years, rather getting ahead of myself. Um, but I'm actually in school um, to become a uh, man uh i have a management major with a minor in performing music and what so school i go to sesquahanna university where was that in, located it's in pennsylvania literally in the middle of nowhere um yeah but um so i'm studying i'm also studying performing music so you know i when i listen to music i listen for the voice um and i also listen for other things but the voice is one of the main things i listen for um and so for me ralph mormon really fit the mold of the joe perry project he had a beautiful falsetto um you know really nice vibrato very nice tone was always singing in key because i'm also like very nitpicky about people singing in key because i have perfect pitch also so it's like you know anytime someone is not singing the correct note my ears just cringe um but he is fantastic i mean the let the music do the talking is inarguably like the best joe perry project album um start to finish there's no filler song anywhere on that record um and i can really turn that record on whenever like whatever mood i'm in wherever i am i listen to that record i mean rock and train the mrs rising shooting star i mean joe's vocals on that album are the the best they've ever sounded um just very i mean you know that he was in a very emotional state during that record and he really poured his heart out um during that record and um it sort of reminds me a little bit of jeff buckley because he was the guy mm -hmm. that really um invented like being a super emotional um singer i mean you listen to his stuff he, his heart bleeds throughout every single note that he sings and it reminds me of the stuff that joe did during the project because you can just hear how much shit he was going through at that time i mean like Alyssa threatening to throw his kid off a balcony like him like you know having to deal with columbia like burying his records into obscurity it's like he was going through a lot of shit and obviously leaving aerosmith it's like his his life was in turmoil so it's like you hear that emotion throughout his music and it's like that's that's what i connect to on that record the most but I know you also like Charlie and uh, Mock Bell because I've seen pictures of you with Charlie and Cowboy. So you, you've you been like a fan of all three records. 
Oh yeah. I mean, I, as much as I, I, I love the other two records. Don't get me wrong, but I have a soft spot for let the music do the talking. I do love, I love, I've, um, I've got the rock and rolls again and once a rocker. I mean, you know, I listen to those just as frequently as let the music do the talking, but given that, um, I started in chronological order, it's, it makes sense that let the music do the talking would be my favorite. Um, but also, um, to mention, uh, the Ren album and Have Guitar to Travel, a couple of albums that were also pretty buried into obscurity and albums that no one really talks about. I mean, the Red album was entirely produced by Joe and Paul Caruso, who unfortunately passed away. I think it was May 3rd of 2006 of, um, I want to say like heart related issues. Um, but Joe pretty much produced that entire album himself. He wrote most of the songs off that record, except um, Vigilante Man and Crystal Ship um and so you're, you're way he, too knowledgeable for me i can't handle this okay i thought i was a geek okay. i thought i was a music geek but you're way over the top here okay you're really yeah, you're, you are not the first person to say that every time i go off on a tangent i i always think like oh i don't i don't know that much like I feel like I, I'm just like any other fan. And then I, I feel like I don't know. I feel like I don't know anything about Joe Perry after talking <laughs> to you. I'll tell you, it's, it's incredible. Wow. So so how did you come to meet some of the the other singers and stuff? Like, wh how did you meet Charlie and, and Mark Bell? And did you ever meet Ralph? No, I never I never met Ralph. I'm actually friends with his wife, though, Deb Orman. She's lovely. <laughs> I've known her for almost four years now um but interesting story about me <laughs> the first time I met Charlie Farron so um I've known Cowboy now since my junior year of high school and so I met him in person for the first time at Northeast Comic Con yeah, uh July yeah, yeah. 2nd 2021 and mm -hmm. so I like walk into the room um i brought um once a rocker and i've got the rock and rolls again knowing that charlie farmer is going to be performing that day i didn't know he was going to be walking around i figured oh he's just going to do the gig and then leave and so i brought it on the off chance i thought that he wasn't like that he was going to be there and maybe sign my record and so um you know i was with my friend ironically also named katie and so i was talking to them just about, you know, I was geeking out about like, I've got the rock and rolls again, explaining who Charlie Farron was, that sort of thing. And so, um, cause Cowboy was, you know, doing other things. I think he was like looking through his bag for something, whatever. And so um, like I'm talking to Katie and I look out of the corner of my eye and I see a very tall figure mm -hmm. and I'm like, I, I recognize that person who is that and I, I look a little closer for just a second and I'm like holy shit that's Charlie Farron and so I just immediately like look at look at Katie instead of looking at Charlie Farron because I don't want him to see me I don't want to be recognized and so I'm like okay I'm just gonna I'm gonna look at Katie ignore Charlie Farron you know Charlie's probably gonna end up talking to Cowboy and so you know they they talk for like a few minutes and Cowboy uh comes over to me with Charlie and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, this is happening. <laughs> this is happening. This is so weird. And so Cowboy's like, oh, I want you to meet Joe Perry's number one fan. And I'm like, no shit, no shit. You did not just say that about me. <laughs> and so Charlie, you know, like now knowing me as this, you know, big Joe Perry fan, he's like, oh, hey, it's nice to meet you. And I'm like, oh my God, now you know me as Joe's biggest fan. Now I have to like live up to all these expectations. Okay. Um, and so, um, you know, Cowboy's like, you know, Charlie, Katie brought, I've got the rock and rolls again. Uh, she spells her name K-A-T-Y and is like, you know, telling him to sign the record. It was so funny. Um, and wow. so um, he signs that record and Charlie's like, oh, how about we like get a picture like you, me and Cowboy. And so Cowboy gets on the other side. It's a picture you have seen yeah. it before. And so Charlie's like, okay, I'll pretend to sign the record even though I already signed it. And Cowboy, you just, you know, stand on the other side and katie you like look at it like oh my god like he's signing the record and so um my friend katie takes a picture and right after that charlie farron's like oh do you do you know joe and i'm like no but i know his family and i i, I still think about that to this day because i'm like why would i say that that's so tacky uh, <laughs> but 
which is true. I do know, I do know some of his family, but still tacky. Um, and so I'm like, oh, you know, I saw you at House of Blues. I don't know if you were at the House of Blues gig that Joe did in 2018. Um, uh, no, but I was going to actually ask you if you were, I was in New Hampshire at Hampton, um, club casino. I was too. Oh yeah. Charlie opened that show. So mm -hmm. you were at that show. Yeah. Yep, that was, front row. Really? Five feet in front of Joe. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, I was the one you, jumping in the front row. <laughs> what did you think about uh, Gary Sharon and, and Joe together? Curious. <laughs> uh, I can tell by that face that you're going to think the same thing I thought. Yeah. Um, so like I said, I'm a singer. I don't like when, you know, singers don't sing in key. I also um, value <laughs> oh. technical singers. And so um, hopefully <laughs> Gary Sharon's twin brother is not listening to this because, uh, you know, we're friends. But uh, yeah, no, I don't love Gary Sharon for the project. Um, I will but, say, though, um, what were you saying? No, I was going to say you. But what did you think about you like extreme or yeah i like extreme um i like um three sides to every story i mean that's yeah, a great a album one. great one. concept album um and obviously porn or graffiti like obviously um but i just i, I think his vocals have it was weird over the years I, I thought it was weird i thought him singing aerosmith songs and stuff didn't sound right to me but mm -hmm. you know i don't know they probably had a good reason for doing it and i'm glad that they I'm glad I got to go up there and, and go, go to the show. Cause I hadn't seen Joe in a while. He was loud that <laughs> night. The, I mean, it was the loudest I'd heard a guitar in a club in a long time. I mean, I've, I always tell people the two loudest bands I ever saw were Motorhead and the Ramones. But that night, that guitar had my ears. Like when I left there, I was like, Holy shit. My fucking ears were like buzzing, man. It was real loud. You weren't in front of his amp, I hope. I yeah, I, I was. <laughs> I was. I was. And my ears, I mean, I was wearing I was smart and I wore earplugs. Um, because I knew I was gonna be in the front row. And I'm like, my ears, I'm not gonna make my ears bleed because I followed him on tour and I'm like, I don't want my ears to be shot the first show. And so I wore my earplugs and my ears were still ringing, even with the earplugs, <laughs> they were still ringing. Um but yeah, that was, a, I mean, I, I really liked the set list of that show. I mean, I was surprised when they pulled a uh, bright light fright out of the vault. Um, Cause Joe did that for the encore of that show. Uh, and the last time he did that was in Japan of um, he did that in Japan uh, in September of 2018. Cause he did a mini tour there and uh, right after he did, or maybe it was, it was before or after he did stuff with the vampires there, but. Yeah, you're um, geeking out. You're yeah. seriously geeking out right now. Big time. <laughs> I know. Yeah. All right. So, so listen, we're going to completely switch gears right now because I talked to you about this and you agreed to do it because mm -hmm. you actually blew my mind with your knowledge of Queen as well. And Queen is like my, uh oh, she's got her notes. Yeah, go. I got, I got a whole list right here. <laughs> we, you know, uh, I, I asked you if you thought you could, you know, tell me your t top 10 favorite Queen song, not the best Queen songs that everyone talks about, because honestly, Bohemian Rhapsody is not even on my list. OK, so Thank I you. mean, the top favorite songs and I'm going to let you go first and you're going to tell me your top 10 favorite songs. And if you have any songs on your list that are in my top 10, I will tell you. OK, so I'm going to preface this with. I think three of the songs on this list are off of the miracle. So I already wow. know that. Yeah, I know. I know. Because, um, yeah. Because you already know, I don't have any songs from the miracle on my list. I know. And no, no offense. Cause I mentioned invisible man. And I think that's a great track, but it wasn't my favorite queen rock. Actually. I think I liked hot space less than I liked, but I like all Queens records. So I mm -hmm. just want to preface with that. I like all their records, but Hot Space and um, uh, uh, the Miracle, my least probably favorite. Well, Made in Made in Heaven is not really, you know, it's more like a compilation of songs. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you know your shit. So go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the first one is Scandal. Uh, this is your tenth tenth favorite song. Are you going no, in reverse this, order? 
this is in no particular order because no I couldn't I couldn't choose I I couldn't do an order I'm just like okay I'll write down the song because I made the list exactly like right when you told me to and I okay. just I did it right off the top of my head I'm like okay these are the songs that I know I like the most so scandal innuendo off of innuendo mm. um because I'm into all the proggy That's stuff on my so list. like yeah uh March of the Black Queen Ooh. off of Queen Two yeah. Uh, breakthrough, but specifically the version from uh, the Miracle Collector's Edition, not the one off of the original Miracle record. It's the one with the real drums and real bass, because it just sounds like a million times better. Uh, Millionaire Waltz off of A Day at the Races. That's on mine. That's two. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> the Prophet Song off of A Night, Night at the, the Opera. Opera. Yeah. Dragon Attack off the game. Uh, Jealousy off of Jazz. Ooh, Friends Will Be one. Friends off of A Kind of Magic. And Liar off of Queen One. Wow, you're like more into a lot of the more obscure. Lot besides Liar, you pick some really obscure tracks. Mm-hmm. Wow, we had three, I think, of the same. My top ten list is twelve songs. <laughs> okay, I, that's I valid. Could, my fi- I did mine in order, and I'll do them from. I'm going to do them from twelve to one. How's that? Doing okay. all right. Oh. Uh, which is actually a smile song. I don't a lot. Not mm-hmm. a lot of people know that Brian May's little song uh, doing all right for the first album. Number 11, I did have a hot space song because it was re- hard to keep under pressure off of my list because mm-hmm. I'm a huge Bowie fan as well. Number 10, the ogre battle from queen. Oh, two. that's yeah. a good song. And I know you, really picked, you picked a song from queen too. That's the metal record. I always tell people that's queen's metal record. You want to hear queen do metal. Listen to number two, play the, game from the game at number nine great song spread your wings news of the world which is my mm. second second favorite queen album i'll tell you my favorite in a minute then i had the millionaire waltz from day at the races which i love nice. Freddie wrote that from innuendo the show must go on i'm a sap yes I like, this, like some of the sappy stuff this is a real sappy one who wants to live forever from a kind mm-hmm. of magic brian wrote that dear friends which is a really short song on sheer heart attack but yep I want that song played at my funeral. Uh, I know that song, the song, the thing to say. In the Lap of the Gods, Revisited uh, is number mm-hmm. three, Sheer Heart Attack. Number two, Save Me. I know we talked about mm-hmm. Save Me. And number one, It's Late from uh, News of the World. My favorite oh, Queen song. record from start to finish is Sheer Heart Attack. That's a great record, too. That 30, is, that's a really good record. I think it's only like 38 minutes, mm-hmm. which is amazing. It's pretty short. I mean, I think Brighton Rock is the longest song off that yeah. record. It's like, what, five, six minutes? Something like that. So you can geek out on Queen pretty good, too. Pretty wow. good. Not as, not as good as Aerosmith or Super Tramp, but pretty good. <laughs> well, I'm going to make you a little upset right now. You ready? I saw the original band three times. No. I was a teenager. Wow. I saw I saw my, the greatest concert I ever saw, and I still talk about this on my podcast, Queen with Thin Lizzy opening. It, oh it's my God. Never going to be that good. And the other two times I saw Queen, they played alone and they played for like two and a half hours, which That's I, amazing. I think it was news of the world. Uh, and yeah, it was news of the world and the game. Uh, wow. The, the, the tours I saw. That's really cool. And the game, I mean, those are like the, the best tours that you could have possibly seen them. I mean, News of the World is a fantastic record start to finish. And I really like It's Late. And I almost put Spread Your Wings on my list until um, I put, I replaced it with You Know You Belong to Me off of the um, collector's edition of The Miracle. I don't know what it is. That song is so simple. I can't believe Um, how much you love The Miracle album. You're like the yeah, biggest I, Miracle I, fan I've I've ever met. I know millions of Queen, know. a lot of million, but I know a lot of Queen fans, but never no one's ever said the Miracle was their favorite Queen record. I know, I know. And I've I've talked to a lot of Queen fans and they're like, You like the Miracle? Like I've never heard of anyone liking the Miracle. I met <laughs> what- uh I I, I I think it was no, it wasn't the miracle. It was it, yeah, it was the miracle. After that, they were they signed the Hollywood Records and they did, had a party on the Queen Mary. And I went and I met Brian May, and I had the oh, first wow. the same type of experience that you had with Joe the first time you met him. I couldn't talk, and I went up to him, and this is what I said to him: "I'm like, I really like 39." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and hey, I was that like, is a good song. He's <laughs> like, oh, thank you. And he shook my hand and then I just took off. I didn't know what to do. I was so nervous. And I'm like, what a fucking idiot. I just went up to Brian <laughs> May and said, I like 39. Out of all the things I could have said to him, that's what I said to him. I like 39. Hey, it's a good song. So at least you at least you were able to get out something. <laughs> so plug all your stuff, you know, what you know, right now. Go ahead and plug everything because I want you to get more people to to check out your pages and stuff. All right. So my main page is at Oasis in the Night. It's an Aerosmith song, which not many people know about because I get a billion questions a day about where my username came from. And I guess no one's ever heard of the song. Um you can also friend me on Facebook. My name's Katie Nathan, um, or, you know, follow my personal account, which is Knat 1325, you know, how to have a little bit of an Eros with reference in there. So, um, yeah, uh, you can message me anytime geek out. I don't care. Do you have a YouTube page? Stuff. Uh, I do. I don't really use it though. Um, I, yeah, I very rarely use my YouTube. So, yeah, you need um, your own podcast. You need your own podcast. I'm telling you right I now. Cannot, I cannot tell you how many times I've heard that. I've probably heard that like at least 50 times by various different people. Uh, once I have the time, I would definitely love to do something like that and just, you know, geek out about all the stuff I, I like to geek out about, but primarily music because that's my main gig. But yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. I mean, you really Thank enlightened you. me. You give me like hope for the future of rock and roll. You know, when I, <laughs> when I see someone 18 years old, that's like so into it and knows the history and you get, and you know, you're listening to newer bands too. And that's really cool, you know? And uh, just keep, like I always say, keep the rock and roll alive and you're doing that right now. So thank you, Katie. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right.